Hi, mystery writers. Welcome to Write a Killer Mystery, where we learn to make a good mystery great. My name is Zira Altair, and today we're going to talk about the victim and the villain in your mystery. It's the mystery's hidden relationship. First, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon for their continued support of this video series and my mystery writing. And if you would like to become a patron, there's a link in the description below. Okay, so today let's talk about the hidden relationship between the victim and the villain. It's a special challenge for mystery writers because oftentimes in, in our mystery, the victim is dead before we learn anything about them. And we want to keep our readers from knowing who the villain is until the very end at the reveal. But meanwhile, the relationship between the victim and the villain is... Uh, a driver for your story. Um, it's actually the basis uh, that you use to build toward that final reveal. So your sleuth must discover the victim and their world before unraveling the threads that lead to uncovering the villain. So your understanding of these two characters and their relationship is pivotal to constructing a substantial mystery and to find the villain your detective must understand the victim they kind of go hand in hand that understanding builds and brings your detective closer to the villain as the story progresses so when you, as the writer, understand each of those characters and build that relationship and the antagonisms that prompted the crime, you lead toward the conclusion. So you need to know about that relationship. You need to understand the relationship between those two characters and without a strong background for each of these main characters uh, your mystery can fall flat and your reader may guess the villain before the conclusion don't want that to happen and the victim may not seem worthy of the killing or your detective's efforts because your sleuth won't be challenged so let's take a look at each of them. First, let's look at the victim. The victim is the raison d'etre of your mystery. Without the victim, your sleuth would have nothing to do. All right? There'd be no clues to find, no suspects to interview, no puzzle to solve. In other words, there wouldn't be a mystery. So you need the victim. And as a writer, you need to build a strong character background for your victim even though they may appear in the story only as a corpse um, you, because your victim is the foundation of the mystery uh, suspects come from their circle of friends and their co-workers um, and their enemies and your sleuth learns about their quirks their likes their dislikes and their personality traits by interviewing the suspects and making that discovery journey about the victim. It's really the first half of your book is really focused on discovering that victim's world and your sleuth learning as much as they can about the victim. And the reader learns through clues and the suspect interviews about the victim's circumstances and their relationship to other people, including the villain, and the victim's world, the world they inhabit. And this is what prompts your reader to start trying to figure out who it was, who it was that is the villain. So how you 
build that character background for your victim is extremely important. Um, the reader follows your sleuth through the investigation and along with your sleuth, they form opinions about the victim. Um, and they're either a despicable human being, being or a seemingly virtuous soul, a likable scoundrel. They find out through the detective's discovery, your reader discovers how they feel about the victim. And like the sleuth, they try to guess why the victim was killed and who did it. it so your victim is much, much more than just a dead body. Uh, something they did triggered a murder and you, the writer, need to know why. You really need to know about that victim. Okay, and then let's flip it around and take a look at the villain. Um, the challenge for us as mystery writers is creating an antagonist, the villain, worthy of your sleuth, while keeping them hidden at the same time. Uh, it's a special challenge for, for mystery writers. In, so in order to accomplish this, and keep your reader guessing until the end, you need to create a full, deep character background for your villain as well. They can't be just a bad guy, all right? Uh, a bad guy or gal. All right. To make the murder believable, you need to tie your villain's motivations to the victim's personality. And until you know the victim's personality, uh, you'll lack a true motivation for the villain. So do you see how they how they work together to build the mystery in your story? It's, it's like backstory gone wild, except you can only dribble tiny, tiny pieces of that backstory into your, into your mystery. So until you know the motivations and methods of your villain, you won't be able to keep them a secret. I know it sounds it sounds backwards, but that's it. You need to understand you, the writer needs to understand the villain so you can plant those clues and those things that point to this person as a possible villain in your story without giving away the secret till the end. Um, because the villain is working behind the scenes through most of your novel. Uh, but you, the writer, need to know the why and how in order to hide that villain in plain sight for your readers. Because one of the ultimate things you want is when you f do that final reveal, this is the villain, right? Your reader, your reader wants to feel, this is one of the things you're promising to your readers as a mystery writer, your reader wants to feel, I should have guessed that, because you have planted the clues about the villain all along. You just kept them hidden with all the other things that you have going on in your story. At the same time, you need to know how the villain, even though they're working behind the scenes, how they put pressure on the sleuth. How, how, how are they complicating your sleuth's discovery journey? Um, and how does the villain work to lead your detective down false trails? And how do they hide their personal antagonism? to the sleuth because you can bet the villain does not want to be discovered. So you have a lot to work with and a lot to hide in your mystery. Uh, but the relationship between the victim and the villain is the big clue, as it were. Uh, what you know as the writer and what you want to hide from your reader is that relationship the relationship between the victim and the villain, it is the big clue. Uh, it's the mystery's background. So think of your uh, relationship, your background about their relationship 
as a data collection. And then you just take the various bits of data, the various pieces of information about their relationship and sprinkle them through your story and you use those bits of data the same way you add other clues to your mystery. So you'll find as you develop your storyline and while you are writing that your full knowledge will help you create unique and believable situations for your mystery. Okay, I hope that helps. That relationship between the victim and the villain is just so important to for you to create a very strong a very strong mystery. And before I go, I just want to mention uh, Audible is a sponsor for this series, right? A Killer Mystery. And it's a wonderful way for you as a writer to experience new stories. Remember, you don't need to read just in your genre, but we read wide as a writer to um, help you understand craft better. This week, um, I was listening on Audible to, what's it called? Don Winslow's um, City on Fire. And that was read by Ari Fleacos, who's a very good, a very good narrator, especially for Don Winslow, where, where uh, everything just keeps compounding and compounding and compounding. So um, there's a link in the description below for a 30-day free trial to Audible. Uh, you can experience hearing great stories and much, much more that Audible has to offer. All right, thank you so much. Keep writing, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.